Okay. Now my next craft is going to be one for Halloween. And it's going to be very unusual. I'm using two 14 inch posable skeletons. Probably would have gone with a smaller one, but I didn't see any posable ones in a smaller size. And I'm going to use other things around the house. These two were $10 for the two. I got them in a pack together. I'm going to use an old brie cheese box. I love brie cheese. Oh, I do. And amongst other things, some used coffee filters. I'm going to take off the rest of the coffee grounds but uh, yeah I save I've saved up a bunch little stack of them there and uh, I knew I was going to use them for a craft because the coffee will uh, stain them and uh, age them like Ooh. but uh, yeah and uh, I'll give you a little background into uh, what I'm doing to give you an idea. I've been inspired by other displays I've seen to create a Victorian style Halloween display that will hopefully be able to set out all year. Now let me give you a little background on this. Historical origins of fairies range from various traditions from Persian mythology to European folklore such as Celtic Slavic and Germanic people and of Middle French medieval romances. According to some historians, fairies were adopted from and influenced by the Paris of Persia. Paris were angelic beings that were mentioned in antiquity in pre-Islamic Persia as early as the Achaemenid Empire. A peri was illustrated to be fair, beautiful, and extravagant natured spirits that were supported by wings. There was a great revival of popularity during the Victorian era with the Cottingley fairies appearing in a series of five photographs taken by Elsie Wright and Frances Griffiths, two young cousins who lived in Cottingley near Bradford in England. The pictures came to the attention of writer Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, creator of Sherlock Holmes, who used them to illustrate an article on fairies he had been commissioned to write for the Christmas 1920 edition of the Strand magazine. Doyle, as a spiritualist, was enthusiastic about the photographs and interpreted them as clear and visible evidence of psychic phenomena. Public reaction was mixed. Some accepted the images as genuine. Others believed that they had been faked. Later in life, the girls, now old women, confessed they were faked, except for the last one. They had cut out book illustrations to use, but picture number five, they swore, was real. Meanwhile, there is a resurgence of interest in taxidermy except the Victorians chose to use it as an art form. Victorian architecture often made for dark, gloomy interiors, and they used taxidermy as a way of bringing in the outside indoors in their own unique way, sometimes placing the specimens in anthropomorphic poses and settings. My project comes at the intersection of these two Victorian interests creating something that would fit right into any Victorian parlor. But now back to my project. Okay, I've been saving back coffee filters for ages, but I figured out a way to with this project. And I use them, for one thing, to construct the wings on one of the, the fairies I'm doing. Um, and I chose to make the wings in a style of Victorian depictions of vampires with large bat-like wings. 
I picked out a picture of a bat and elongated the wings. Then I found a picture of a skull that looked aged and spotted. Using a photo editor, I shaped the picture into an elongated oval shape that gives us just the hint of a skull still. Wanting my wings to better fit my skeleton, I cut off each wing from the bat's body, leaving just a sliver of the body on each wing. Then I reassembled the wings and resized, resized them to fit. Basically, I cut out the body of the bat. I just wanted mostly the wings. As a final touch, I lightened the wings several shades to make them look old and faded. Then I used a coffee filter, wiping off any remaining grounds and then rinsing in water and let dry flat. When dry, I taped the filter to the center of a plain sheet of paper and ran it through my printer, applying the design of the wings onto the coffee filter. And I did this multiple times to, until it held its place good. Still tape attached to the paper, I cut out my wings and then I discarded the paper and folded my wing up like an accordion about where the wing bones should be. But I took it a step further than that, as you'll see here in a little bit. Now for the skeleton, I soaked them in vinegar water which is acidic to remove any finishes on it. Um, I'm not sure if this will do anything to plastic, but I need to rough up the finish a little bit to allow an aged finish to adhere. I got a 13 inch baking dish and filled it most of the way up with 50, 50, um, cider vinegar and water. Uh, and I added to that a little bit of Dawn dish detergent. I folded back the skeleton legs at the knees and placed them face down into that solution so that they would fit inside. Um, face down because the front side is the most important. And then I let it set overnight in that liquid. I flipped them over to set most of the day the next morning. Then I removed them and rinsed off the solution and let them dry. For the next step, I used fine sandpaper to rough up the texture even more. Skeleton, I have this zoomed in so you can uh, see better, but uh, I'm not sure how the vinegar bath did. Um, it's still kind of shiny. Um, but one benefit of the vinegar bath that I like is that See the joints here, how they're screwed together? Well, it rusted these. They were silver. And it rusted them up. And that's going to look more antique and authentic. For whatever doesn't get coated whenever I do the, uh, the, the new finish on it. But anyway, just take sandpaper. And uh, rough up that finish. Try to take off some of the shine and all that. You want to give it something to hold on to. plastic surface doesn't take paint or anything easily unless it's that special paint. Oop. You can't see what I'm doing, can you? Well, I guess you can. But I'm just going to go all over it then. And, uh, this is just the leg bone, but, uh, do the, the hands. Even though 
they've got a lot of nice bumps and stuff in them to hold uh, the finish. Um, which I'll tell you will be um, some walnut stain. I know it doesn't adhere well to plastic. I'm going to put it on and then uh, wipe it off and just let it settle in the the joints and the creases and stuff. Um, but you'll see that coming up in our next step. Okay, so I have this old octangular fish aquarium and it's it's not worth a whole lot it's a uh, plastic but uh i'm gonna use this for my display now next step you want gloves gotta have the gloves or else your hands are gonna be dark brown for a long time I just have this little old can of stain, wood stain, and then uh, get my paper towel down in it. Just get some on there, and it's real simple. You just wipe it on, then you let it set and dry a little bit and then wipe it off because we're going to make these these suckers look old <laughs> this is going to be hard getting this down in here in these deep crevices in the bones. I just have to see what I can do. Do my best. But anyway, that's what I have so far. And I'll show you what I have later on. got it down inside there yeah just get a little excess on your rag and kind of push it down into the cracks if you have to like between the ribs here's something I've been wanting to do and I'll do it first is uh, these uh, this I tell you, I'm not as worried about the uh, certain areas are going to be covered by uh, clothing and stuff. I won't worry about that. Just get them the best as I can. And I guess more can be added later to age it even more. But you especially want to get the hands and feet. Wow. I'm really liking this. Okay, so there you can kind of see what I've gotten done so far. <laughs> you don't like the smell of this, huh? Okay. <laughs> Lay that down, let it dry a little bit. While wow, the gloves on still, I'll go over and do this. One. I'm experimenting here. I'm going to leave it on a little bit thicker on this one. 
Okay, and there's number two done. Let me see how this one's doing. Okay. These seem to dry fast, so I guess if you want to rub anything off, you better do it fast. Okay, the uh, wood stain took several days to dry. I'll warn you about that. Now I've been going over them with my acrylic paints, just uh, touching up here and there. I like to add uh, like dirt and um, mold and mildew and uh, slime, whatever you want to call it. And I've been just touching them up here and there. I want to do more, but this is what I've done so far. Okay, now I've printed off on coffee filters two more of the old ones used, so they'll have that little bit of extra aged look to them. There's a rug here I'm making, and that's going to be a tablecloth. And over here, I'm just spray paint or spraying down these. Uh, they're going to be little tarot cards. I'm going to give them like three coats of a hairspray and letting them set in between and drying. And then I'll be on to something. Okay, I'm spraying everything with um, the hairspray. And here I'm making hardwood flooring out of uh, paper and uh, I'm giving it several coats of hairspray but you can use hairspray if used properly I should add <laughs> and properly by properly I mean Coat them down with hairspray. That helps hold the color in better. And keeps them from running when you do your gluing. Okay, so now comes the assembly part. Here's uh, my uh, octagon aquarium. Okay. I printed out sheets of paper. And then cut them into these... Well, it's like a envelope shape um, pieces, and I'm just laying them overlapping. Down inside to give it a wood finish. Then I print it off on a use coffee filter, a little rug for down in there. I'm using this box as the table, the table leg. Got this cheese box, which will be the table top. And over it, and over it, I'm placing this other coffee filter I printed off with little uh, skulls all over it. Okay, now I have this uh, this little shelf thing. Um, it was white, and I painted it uh, brown, but with different colors in it to make it look. Uh, uh, Age, and I'm going to set it down inside there and there'll be stuff added to it later I need to take this as soon as it warms up a bit outside and uh, 
spray it with a spray adhesive, the cheese box, and stick this down so it'll lay down better. Um, next, I'm going to... I don't know, you'll have to wait and see. <laughs> okay, next, I took a jar. As you can see down, it has some beans in it. I just left it in there. I covered it with a paper towel. And then I covered it with this shiny material. And this will be going in there as a seat for one of my skeletons. I'm going to put over this uh, rubber band, I'm going to put some uh, yarn, I think, black yarn. But, uh, yeah, it was simple, fast. I just cut off pieces of the material. I wrapped the two squares at different angles. Okay, and by now your skeleton should look like this. Wait, hold up, you say. <laughs> All right. Um, now what I did was took a napkin ring. In this case, they were already painted, so I got lucky there. I took that same material that I did for the seat, cut out a double piece, a strip that was a double piece, and in the very middle of that piece, it was a it was a oblong shaped piece, probably about the, about about as long as this, and I stuffed, uh, rolled up a couple of tissues, stuffed them inside, then I poked the material down through the ring and wrapped it around the back and I held it under there with a rubber band. Could have glued it but uh, really didn't want to. I get glue all over the place when I tried the glue gun. <laughs> then I had some uh, black cheesecloth and I cut a double piece of that double square and I just put it over the shoulders as a big uh, cape like kind of old shredded cape because I wanted to look antique and um, so that's where we are so far okay I glued feathers down along the spine with this already on, this uh, cheesecloth, the black cheesecloth, I put the uh, the feathers down the back. Maybe you can see it back this way. And connected them along the spine. Just different colors. Now I sat them in there at the table. Him or her, I haven't decided yet. And uh, I've got to add the detail to it now. Oops. But uh, that's most of it so far. At least of this step. All right. Here it is put together. made a little candle and a little tiny set of tarot cards and there's a little tar uh, little crystal ball down in the bottom there's a skeletal cat and dog and there's a bookcase with a pumpkin and a raven and a lot of detail in this that you can't really quite see. Um, hopefully I'll put it up on the shelf and you'll be able to see it a lot better then. And I'm still not done.
Stuck a light up inside it, there, and uh, that's what it looks like now. Oh, don't know how the dog moved. <laughs> no, that's the cat, sorry. The dog's over on the other side. But yeah, I cleaned up the glass on there some more, and it's, it's much clearer. I love how that light makes that candle flame look almost like it's actually lit but all that candle is is at the bottom is a uh, lamp finial a little piece of rolled up white paper and the top is a uh, q-tip that I cut in half and I dipped in uh, let's see it was like two parts yellow one part red and I rolled it around and then I uh, when it was dry and I uh, kind of brushed it a little bit to pull out the flames to give it like a flame effect let me go around this way show you this side of it So what do y'all think? The foulest stench is in the air. The funk of 40,000 years. And grisly ghouls from every tomb are closing in to seal your doom. And though you fight to stay alive, your body starts to shiver. For no mere mortal can resist the evil of the, the thriller. thriller. 